Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. Today we're going to take an in-depth practical look at one of the most affordable and legal ways to enjoy some <clears throat> auto fun without taking out a high interest loan secured by using a kidney as collateral and maybe submitting to 30 years of indentured servitude as part of your repayment plan. This is the Crossman DPMS Panther Arms SBR and this is a full slash semi slash select fire CO2 powered magazine fed BB gun. Now we're going to look at the pros and cons, the strengths and weaknesses, and of course we're going to do some shooting to see how it works. And just so you know, this is an independent review. We have no affiliation with the manufacturer or any distributors of this product. We don't sell this product and we didn't receive anything in exchange for this review. Please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And visit us at AttagaArmory.com to check out a bottle of our ultra premium citrus powered synthetic CLP. Finally, a single bottle cleaner and lubricant that doesn't suck. Now, let's get to it. First off, let's talk about some of the key features of the Crossman DPMS Panther Arms SBR air gun. Now this has got the standard stoner pattern controls as you'd see on something like an M16, an M4, or an AR-15. It does include a proper select fire switch as seen on the standard unneutered M16 with safe, semi, and full positions. It's got a 25 round magazine with dual CO2 capacity. And it comes with one mag. It's got a standard Picatinny quad rail forend, so there's plenty of room for accessories or whatever you want to throw on this thing. It also comes standard with this angled forend grip, and it's got an adjustable six position stock. Now on the other side here, it does actually have a functional dust cover, and it's got folding sights, and the rear sight is adjustable for windage, and that's it. There is no elevation adjustment on these sights, and these are made of polymer. Now it does have a standard AR compatible pistol grip, so you can exchange this out if you want to put on some other kind of grip. And it's got a cyclic rate of fire of 1400 rounds per minute, so it is significantly faster than what you would see on a M16 or M4 type rifle. And the manufacturer claims that it does about 430 feet per second on full CO2 cartridges. And while we weren't really able to get the chrono to successfully work with these tiny little BBs, uh, I can say that it's reasonably powerful, so I, I wouldn't put it past them to, to be around that speed. And this just uses standard 4.5 millimeter or uh, 0.177 caliber BBs. And officially, this setup weighs about 6.21 pounds. The loaded mag and the SIG Romeo 5 Red Dot Optic were at about 6.8 pounds total. And of course, it's got this uh, fake can on the front, and that doesn't really have any functionality other than just making it look cool. <laughs> Next up, let's discuss some of the pros. You know, some of the things that we like about the Crossman DPMS Panther Arms SBR. Now, first off, I think that Crossman partnering with DPMS was a fantastic idea. Rather than each company trying to kind of reinvent the wheel, it was basically designed by two companies that really knew what they were doing in their very specific areas. You know, you've got Crossman with decades and decades of air gun design. You've got DPMS with just, I, I don't even know how many countless um, AR kits and, um, you know, full build rifles they've produced over the years. But I mean, just tons of experience in the AR manufacturing field. So, you know, these two coming together was an excellent idea. Another thing I really like about it is that the SBR has real world training value with familiar controls. You know, you've got the fire selector and the safety, you've got the magazine release, the bolt stop and release, the, the charging handle, all of them work just like a real AR pattern rifle. And it even has a last round bolt hold open that actually works. And of course, you can release the bolt forward either with the charging handle or by tapping on that bolt release. 
So this is really a great training tool for teaching new shooters. I do like that there's also an option to get these speed loaders for it. And these things are super handy. Um, this makes filling that mag just almost, you know, instantaneous and easy. And considering that this thing's got a cyclic rate that's so fast that it'll just burn through that 25 round mag quicker than a Maui Mountain Dew, this thing's a very welcome addition. Now, I like that it's got plenty of room for optics and accessories. It's nice to have options, right? It's nice to be able to kind of customize these things. And uh, so there's plenty of room for anything that you might want to throw on here. I also like that the power distribution seems to be pretty consistent. So you've got good power for most of the CO2 cartridge capacity. It doesn't really start to wilt until that last mag. And you'll notice it drop off really fast when it's, when it's out of juice. I mean, it, it goes quick, but throughout, you know, maybe six, uh, seven mags, you're getting good consistent power. And overall, the reliability with the Crossman Copperhead BBs has been excellent. We didn't have any issues basically until the CO2 started to run low. And we shot six full mags before it ran low and started having failures on the seventh mag. And the actual functional weighted blowback moving bolt really simulates a little bit of recoil. It's almost like shooting a subsonic 22. It also has really good ergonomics. I like the adjustable stock. It's very comfortable. And of course, just the AR pattern in general is known for being very ergonomic and comfortable. So initially I was a little bit worried about not having an elevation adjustment. You know, you've only got windage on the back. The front is just completely static, uh, but it actually was reasonably well adjusted right where it needed to be. And it actually provides perfect co-witness with this high mount on the SIG Romeo 5. I mean, it is just flawless co-witness exactly where I would want it to be on something like this. The DPMS Panther Arms SBR has pretty darn good power too. When we shot a milk gallon full of water, many of the rounds dented the back of the full jug. None fully penetrated, but you know, that's still pretty impressive for a CO2 powered four and a half millimeter BB gun. I also like that it's easy to open for inspection and to lube the action. It only takes two drops of silicone oil, basically just one on the magazine o-ring and one on the internal seal. Now, if you decide to get one of these, you're going to want to get some very specific lube just for air guns. And it's basically just a hundred percent silicone oil. Now they've got stuff that's, you know, marketed for air guns that is very overpriced and bloated. If you go and look for a treadmill lubricant, you're going to find the same exact 100% silicone oil, and you're going to get about between four times and eight times as much product for your money. So this is a four ounce bottle, and this cost me about the same as some guys are charging for like a half ounce of air gun lube. So uh, go check out treadmill lubricant, and uh, this bottle will probably lasts you for the rest of your life, and you can, you know, put it in your will and hand it down to your grandchildren. Now, overall, the fun factor on this thing is just excellent. You have to have a lot of sand chafing your crevices to not strike a grin when you first pop it into full and squeeze off some bursts. It's really hard not to have fun with this thing. And of course, it does have that solid real world firearm training value. Whether you use it for practical training exercises or you just want to run around and pretend to be like a super tactical black ops ninja operator. The DPMS Panther Arms SBR realism factor is definitely hard to beat.
Let's move on to the cons. We know there's no such thing as true perfection in the gun world, so let's talk about some of the things that we don't like about the Crossman DPMS Panther Arms SBR air gun. Now, first off, I mentioned that there's no elevation adjustment on the included sights, only windage. I would like to see some kind of elevation option. I mean, obviously we got lucky on this unit because it is already, the elevation is pretty well spot on, but you might not get that lucky with yours. So it'd be nice if you could somehow do some kind of elevation adjustment. Also, I think the cyclic rate is just a bit too fast. It'd be nice if they could kind of dial it back. So you're at 1400 rounds per minute. And that equals 23.3 rounds per second. In my opinion, that's way too fast. The entire mag is gone in just over a second. A standard cyclic rate between like 700 and 950 rounds per minute would be better. Your mags would last longer and it would more closely match the real world counterparts that this is kind of trying to mimic. I'm also not really in love with these magazines. They're kind of heavy and got a bit of an awkward access door that sort of can be hard to close. Um, the mags are also quite expensive. I mean, they're like three times the cost of a good quality AR mag. Now, I get why they're more expensive. They have internals that are much more complicated than something like an AR mag. So I, I get it. I, you know, I understand why it is the way it is. Um, just, it'd be nice if it was a little more refined, I think. Especially that little side door that opens and closes. I, I think that needs a little bit of work. Another part of the magazine situation that I think could use a little bit of improvement is having a good positive click when the mag is seated and locked in. It's just not as noticeable when it's actually locked into place as it is on something like a, a full-scale real AR or M4. So you, you, don't really hear it. You don't really feel it. Basically, you got to kind of tug on the mag to make sure that it is all the way, you know, locked in place. And uh, the first first couple of times we shot this one, we actually didn't have it seated all the way, and this mag dropped onto the concrete, uh, which really sucks. Uh, fortunately, it still functions, but it kind of damaged the bottom corner of the magazine. And these are, you know, fifty dollar mags, so um, that kind of sucked. So a little bit more positive click there would be nice. Now, another thing that I noticed, zeroing this thing can be kind of tricky because there is still a bit of a gradual power curve. So, you know, even though the power curve is relatively flat across those first like six magazines, um, it is still a curve. So you'll notice that the point of impact versus point of aim will kind of drift slightly uh, as you kind of work your way through those mags. So I would recommend not zeroing this thing on the first mag and definitely don't zero it toward the last mag. So maybe just fire off like one or two mags to kind of get that initial heavy, you know, burst out of those, those cartridges. And then as it sort of kind of stabilizes into the second or third mag, that would be a good place to uh, do your zeroing so that you're sort of balanced somewhere in the middle of that power curve. Now, another thing I noticed is when tightening the first CO2 cartridge, it sometimes leaks ever so slightly uh, out of the second cartridge port. So you gotta tighten the second one really fast. And, and this isn't always happening, that's the weird thing. Like sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't do it. So I, I don't know what's up with that, but you know, there's some weirdness there with the valves. Another issue is that this is very particular to the type of ammo that you can use. So uh, as I mentioned, the Crossman Copperhead ammo works flawlessly, but we had major malfunctions with the Daisy brand BBs. They actually clogged the barrel. We had to disassemble the gun and actually pull the barrel and tap it out with a dowel. Um, and you know, to be fair, the manual warns of this. They tell you do not use anything but the Copperhead uh, BBs, but you know, that's that kind of sucks. That, that's, you know, it's like, Imagine buying like a Ruger 1022 and they're like, oh, well, you can only use our brand of ammo or whatever. Maybe making this a little less ammo sensitive would probably be a good place to focus on future improvements. Also, I noticed that it has a pretty heavy trigger. So I've got a trigger uh, scale, but it only goes up to eight pounds. So my, my eight pound trigger scale was not enough to, um, you know, be able to gauge this. If I had to guess, I would say that it was somewhere in the 11 to 12 pound range. Now, it's probably a little heavy like that, maybe for safety reasons. Um, of course, mil spec M16, M4 triggers and AR15 triggers are pretty heavy, you know, maybe nine or 10 pounds if you get kind of a stock kind of messy one. Um, but this is definitely heavier than that. And it's not particularly clean. So it's a, it's a little bit, it's at the bottom of the bell curve when it comes to mil spec trigger quality. 
And another thing that you should be aware of is that the forward assist is not actually real. Now, you probably wouldn't need a forward assist on this under any kind of normal circumstance. Although, it's weird though that they machine forward assist notches on the bolt. Those are machined into the bolt. However, this is just molded into this overall broader polymer mold here. So you can't actually use the forward assist. Now it's not a big deal, but you should just be aware that, that that's not a real function right there. That's the only function that doesn't truly mimic the conventional AR-15 or M16. So what's the bottom line on the Crossman DPMS Panther Arms SBR? Well, despite some of the shortcomings, the overall experience was very positive. It's generally reliable, it's affordable, and it's very fun to shoot. It also has great training value for young shooters. So with that, we hope this video was helpful. Please leave us a comment, let us know your experience with this product, and we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.